I'm Dr. Kenneth Cooper with the Cooper Clinic, Cooper Aerobic Center, and Cooper Institute in Dallas. Perhaps known as the quote unquote father of aerobics. Of course, I wrote the book 40 years ago, so I'd be called the grandfather of aerobics at the present time. But I'm so happy to be associated with Governor Perry, Senator Nelson, Representative Eisler, in getting something in this state never been done before, and that's passing Senate Bill 530 back in 2007 that made it mandatory for the first time ever that we had physical fitness testing through the 12th grade and bring in PE back in the schools. I'm excited about that because in testing and getting data on 2.4 million students, we now have data that is too impressive to be ignored. And what we discovered was progressively poor performance as the children go from the third to the 12th grade. Roughly 33% of the children in the third grade could pass the simple test, reach a healthy fitness zone, less than 10% as seniors in high school could pass the test. Now that was all funded by personal funding. Government funding was not provided because Senate Bill 530 was a mandate without funding. After we got the data presented last July in 2008, the results of that testing, it shook up a lot of people around the state and around the country, but also allowed us to get funding from Robert Wood Johnson Foundation to go ahead to the next step and analyze the data, looking at three things that the school administrator wanted to know in this order. Is relationship between physical fitness testing and the results of physical fitness testing and absenteeism the children may are in school. Why? Because schools are paid by the number of days that children are in school. If we could reduce the absenteeism of this state in school by 10%, the schools get $237 million more from the government fund, number one. Number two is they want to know, how does your fitness testing relate to drugs, gangs, discipline problems? And number three, what about the grades kids make in school? Here's a relationship. This data is unbelievably positive. The kids that are physically fit, reach a healthy fitness zone in all six categories, they had the least absenteeism, the least number of discipline problems, and by far the higher grades. Been able to show that the brain is rewired in response to exercise. It's more amenable to learning. Immediately after exercise, areas of the brain most perfused the blood and oxygen are those responsible for creativity and memory. Let me give an example here. One of the things that we looked at is classification of the schools in the state of Texas by their tax scores. Exemplary, recognized, acceptable, unacceptable. Until now, the only way they were classifying these schools is by the tax scores here, 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 and here. What we show in testing, 2.4 million students, what we find out, the level of aerobic fitness perfectly correlates with the academic grades. That's fantastic. I can't guarantee you that these children out here, unacceptable, if they could improve their cardiovascular fitness, would they improve their grades? I think they would. We'll be able to answer that with the phase two of this study. Because right now we're going, starting the second evaluation, starting in January this year, to see was there improvement. I predicted that if we get all the state involved in this, we could see a 50% improvement in these scores in one year. I'm talking about the fitness scores. What happened academically? Why do I say that? Because the studies we've been doing in Dallas for the last year, looking at smaller groups, supervised program, 75 minutes twice a week, and we saw dramatic improvements in their fitness and their grades.